Hey everybody, how are we doing today? I hope we're doing good. I hope we're doing great. It's good to see you all once again. Um, please pardon me for my five minutes late. <laughs> um, but before I sorry today I'm using Facebook Live. Um, I don't know what's going on with my um with my laptop, so bear with me, okay? Whether the laptop works or not, whether Zoom works or not, we have got to do what God has called us to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> so please bear with me. Um, how have you guys been? I hope you've been doing good. I give God glory. I give him honor. I give him praise for what he's been doing, what he has done, and what he's about to do. So bear with me, people of God. Um, today, give me a moment, please. Give me a moment. Today, um, we're going to be talking about something that the Lord laid in my spirit um, yesterday. But I didn't get the full word, and I was like, God, what does it mean? And today, the Holy Spirit gave me the word for His people. So that being said, um, let's quickly pray, okay? Father, we thank you, we bless you, we give you praise, we magnify your name for who you are, each end of days, we adore you, we worship you, we thank you, God, for this great and mighty day that you have made, oh God, for this is the day that you have made, Father, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we come to your throne of grace this hour and we ask for your mercy, O oh God, in whichever way we have gotten it wrong with you, King of glory, we ask that you have mercy upon us us oh god forgive us our trespasses father we'll repent of our iniquities oh god father let your mercy find us now oh god in the name of your son yeshua lord set us true and true if you find any iniquity in us oh lord let your mercy speak for us let your mercy find us oh god in the name of your son jesus oh lord of my last king of glory we have gathered here once again to do your business not my business or the business of anybody or anything but your business dear God so may I only say what I've been asked to say and do what I have been asked to do God sweet gentle spirit of God will welcome you come take preeminence come take control we can't do this by our strength you are a teacher a guide a leader guiding leaders sweet gentle spirit of God have your way give me the utterance to speak the truth use me whichever way you want for i make myself available use me as you please dear god may my life bring you glory may the lives of your people bring you glory have your way O oh god have your way right now thank you father my hia kaseli hia ma su hia kasuli hia ma ama se hia le hia ma ama su hale hia kasu ma ha ima se hia kasama o ma se hia le kase ma ha ma su hia la hia ma su hia le kase God you are a good God you are a great God a faithful God a merciful God an awesome God. I praise, O God, belongs to you. I worship, O God, is for you. I must say, we love you, O God, for who you are. 
muhile kasuma hama sahia ma ama sahia ma sehile kasuma hama sahira hia you are the god that gladdens the hearts of his people ima kasule hia ma masuha ma se you change it not there god you are the same you are always the same you are a constant god muhile kasala hia ma suhia ma muhile kasema hama suha my my soul praise you oh god my soul magnify you o king of glory mo hiele ke se ma hama suhali who is like unto thee o god who is like unto our god there is none like you and there would never be any like you king of glory mo hiele ke se ma hama suhia ba you are worthy of our praise o god you are worthy of our worship o god i must say hiele ka suma how we give it from a pure heart o god mo hie ka sele hia ma suhia ma ha mo hila hia ma se hie ka sule hia ma 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 se hia la hia ma suhi ma ha we love you dear god Nahila hiyama, lima se hiyama, o ma hile hiyama suhi. So here you're such a loving father, gentle. Ma hila hiyama su, who can separate us from your love? Nothing and nobody. Ma hika se ma hama su, hile hiya, you are a constant faithful God. So we say, blessed be your name, dear God. You must so hear the masu here. Le he mahama say he ele kasu receive our praise and worship, O God. May he come unto you as a sweet smelling savour. Have your way, dear God. Have your way, Father. In Yeshua's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and a hey, oh God we thank you ma hi ka su ma ha ma hi e ka su le hi a ma su hi e ma hi a ma su hi e ma hi e se hi e le hi ma mo hi e se hi ma su hi le it's all because of you God me hi ma se hi e le ka su ma ha ma ha ma se hi e le ka su lo hi ma ha ma se hi e ka su le hi a ma mo su hi mo su hi le hi mo hi e ka se le hi a ma he Hey, Papa, ma se hiya ma su hiya ka se li hiya ma. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Hmm. Do with me as you please, God. Have your way, dear God. Have your way. In Yeshua's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Yes, yes, yes. So, people of God, today, uh, um, our scripture is taken from the book of Luke 22, from 28 to 34. But before we go into that, our topic for today is crossing the line. Crossing the line. You know, so yesterday, um... I had my time with the Lord and I was praying for a word for his people today. And all I kept hearing was crossing the line. And I didn't really get anything else aside from crossing the line, right? So I was like, okay, God, what you want me to say? What is, what is crossing the line? So I was even talking to, I was like, I don't even know what God um, is saying to me right now. Because the only thing I heard was crossing the line. 
you know, so I didn't know what it was. So this morning I woke up at about six and I went into the other room and I started praying. I said, God, I need a word for your people. And I so I got the word for today, which is crossing the line. But like I said, our scripture today is taken from the book of Luke 22, um, 22, 28 to 34. I'm going to read that quickly before we go into today's um, business. So I'm using my other phone. So it says, Ye had they which have continued with me in my temptation. This is Jesus speaking. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father had appointed unto me. And ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And 31 says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may shift you as with. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen, strengthen thy brethren. When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. So this is our scripture for today. And so like I told us, our, uh, our topic today is crossing the line. So as I was, you know, meditating and, and, and being in the presence of the Lord, asking God, what does crossing the line mean? And the Holy Spirit made me to understand. He said, even though we live in an age of grace. And then, like I said to us some time ago, if you're truly saved, you would never lose your salvation. If you're truly saved, you can never lose your salvation. I think I spoke about this some time ago. And so the Holy Spirit made me to understand, but we still can cross lines with God. And when we cross lines with God, it brings certain judgment on us. And so I was made to understand that if you are in a place where, you know, you think that you're crossing the line, like I tell us every time, see, you cannot say you don't know what you are doing. You cannot say, oh, I didn't know this and I did it. Anybody that says that to you is just lying to you. And that is why we have our conscience. And as a born again Christian that is truly saved, you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, even before you take that step, has already made you to understand, my child, this is not the place for you. Do not do this. This is wrong. And that is the gospel truth. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will know that even before you do what you do, the Spirit of God already wants you. You already know that this is wrong. This is against the God that you serve. But most of us will still do it anyways. We still do it anyways because we still don't understand this concept called Christianity. We still don't understand. Most of us are into Christianity just because we want to belong to a religion. Some of us are into Christianity because we're born into Christianity. Some of us are into Christianity for different reasons. Some actually think that is the fastest way for us to make money. So we still don't understand as Christians the things that we need to do and the things that we shouldn't do. You know, so even though the spirit of the Lord has already warned you to say, my child, this is not a path for you. Or my child, what you want to do is against God, but you still do it anyways. Why? Because most of us are not living in obedience. Most of us, we do not reverence God like we reverence man. You know, and so the Holy Spirit made me to understand that even though you were born again, you can still cross the line with God. You know. 
And so, if you, if you know that you are in that place where you have crossed the line with God in disobedience, the only thing maybe to understand, you can cross the line with God in disobedience or you can cross the line in obedience. So it depends on which part that you are. But if you are one of those that have crossed the line in disobedience or you think that you are about to cross the line in disobedience, today is a good day for you to cry out unto the Lord and turn to him and say, God, have mercy upon me. Turn my life around as quickly as possible. Why I'm saying this is because it is so easy for us to cross the line. As we go on, you will understand better. Jesus already knew how too well the, 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 the fierceness of the enemy. Even Jesus, that is the son of God, Satan was not afraid of him. He tempted him. So how much more you and high? So Jesus already had first and knowledge of what Satan can do. You know? So he knew that Satan comes with every weapon in hell to separate or save us, the children of God. And the only thing made me to understand that we cannot understand this because most often we are carnal Christians. Carnality is too much in us as Christians today. You know, people don't like to talk about this because they don't want to be judged. But the truth is that how long are we going to keep quiet? How long are we going to watch our brothers and our sisters take the wrong path, go the wrong way because we want to please man? The time has come for us to stand and say, no, I want to please God first before any man. I don't care who that man is. God comes first. You know, and so Jesus already knew how powerful Satan is. Because Satan came and tempted him when he came out from the 40 days and 40 nights fast. And we as children of God were not exempted. And that's what the Holy Spirit made us to made me to understand. He said, but because we live in, in carnality, it is hard for us to understand the great conflict that is raging in the spiritual realm. You know, most of us as Christians, we think that Christianity is just about this that we we'll see right here in, in the world that we live in. We think that Christianity is just about going to church and paying tithes and paying offering and paying seeds and all these things that we do as Christians, doing conferences and this and that. That's not what Christianity is about. If you're, if you're spiritual minded, like we're supposed to be as Christians, we will know that in the spiritual realm, there is a raging war between God and the enemy. Why? Because the enemy's agenda is to turn the children of God away from him. That is all Satan cares about. Satan does not care about anything else but to turn you against God. Because he knows how much you mean to God. See, like a parent, if somebody wants to hurt you, and they don't want to hurt you directly, they hurt your child. Because they know how much that child means to you. They know that if they get your child, they have automatically gotten you. And that is Satan's strategy. So all Satan cares about is to make us be rebellious against God. To live in disobedience. And once we do that, it's okay. Because Satan has the understanding that our God is holy. And sin is what separates us from God. People might not agree with this because they keep telling us that, oh, once you're born again, you're born again. See, anybody that tells you that is leading you to hell, to your grave. Because even though you're born again, you have to strive to be holy. Because the God that you serve is a holy God. You know? And so we need to understand that there is a war that is going on in the spiritual realm. But we're just concerned about what we see today and what's happening now. And so we don't even care about anything. See, before anything happens in the physical, it has already happened in the spiritual. And most of us don't understand that. And that is why as a Christian, you're in constant battle. With the power of darkness. In constant battle, there is no leave. That is why you have to be praying and you have to be warring continuously. 
<laughs> but today, Christianity has been made to, they made us to understand that Christianity is just this, where you just do this and that's it. See, you have your part to play. God cannot play your part and play his part. God is always ready to play his part. But are you ready to play your own part? Most often, we tend to leave our part for God and leave God's part for him as well. You know? And so I was made to understand the agenda of Satan is to destroy all believers who have fixed their who have fixed their gaze upon God, who have hungered for God, who, whose hearts are, you know, fixed on God. His aim is to destroy such believers. And I told us some time ago, a thief doesn't come into the house of anybody that does not have anything. A thief only comes into the house where he knows that he can get something valuable, something that he can steal. So if as a Christian, you are not having constant battles, then you have to check your Christianity again. The enemy does not leave those that have decided to be faithful to God. But the enemy leaves those that are deceiving themselves, thinking that they are deceiving God or thinking that they are deceiving others. Those are the ones that don't have constant battles. But if you're truly a child of God and you have made up your mind that you're going to serve God and be faithful to God, you're in constant war. And that's why when we read Luke 22, Jesus told uh, Peter, go back and read that scripture that we just read again. You know? So we need to understand that. We don't realize how determined Satan is to destroy us believers who have fixed our gaze upon God. There is a line that can be crossed on our walk with him. And that's what I'm here to make us understand today. That's why I told us the, that, that, that we can cross the line with God. Despite how loving God is. I'm talking about those who have truly chosen to serve him. I'm talking about those who have truly chosen to serve God. And that line is a line of obedience. And once that line is crossed, it sets up alarm in hell. And that's what the Holy Spirit made me understand. Once you've crossed that line of obedience, all the alarms are set up. They know that there is a new person that has taken the stand. And so the enemy will send his people against you. You know. If you cross that line into disobedience, hell knows as well. And if you cross it, if you cross it, if you cross the line of disobedience, then he sends you things that will keep you where you are. Things of the world. Things that you like. So it will keep you where you are. You can't move forward. So instead of you to try to find your way back. Like we spoke about some time ago. And I said if you're truly born again. And there are times when temptation comes. And you backslide. But because you are truly born again. You must find your way back to God. But the enemy's job. Is to keep you where you are. With all these things. That he knows that you want. So you will continue to live in disobedience. And a lot of us Christians have crossed that line of disobedience. And instead of us to find our way back, we have decided to dwell where the enemy has kept us. With the things that the enemy is showing to us. You know? And so I was made to also understand that the moment you cross that line into a life of obedience to God, or depend on Jesus alone, we become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. And because we become a threat to the kingdom of darkness, we are prime target of demonic and principalities and powers, of demons, principalities and powers. We are prime target. See, what we don't understand is this. In the spiritual realm, in the, in the, in the, in the um, Holy Spirit, help me. In Satan's kingdom, right, he has demons of different rankings. And they all have a duty. They've been said, this is what you've been told. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. This is what. And they take their job seriously. They don't play because they know the importance of a soul. 
But we as Christians, we've been given instructions by God to do this and do that, to win souls to the kingdom. But we don't take our instructions seriously. But these demons, these principalities, they don't play. They don't play. They take the assignment really seriously. But most often, we as Christians, we don't take our assignments as seriously as they do. Because if we really take our assignments as seriously as they do, the world will be a better place today. We would have been able to win so much souls into the kingdom of God. The devil doesn't play. Anybody that tells you, oh, that's not real. Oh, because Jesus has died and this and this, they are just deceiving you. The devil doesn't play with anybody. His concern is to take that one valuable thing that you have. And I've told us, as a human, it doesn't matter how many cars, how, how much money you have in your account, what, how many mansions you live in, or whatever stuff that you have. The only valuable thing you have as a human is your soul. Nothing else is valuable. Nothing else is valuable. And that's the only thing that Satan wants from you. And that is why when he wants to give you something, he gives you something in exchange for your soul. And that's why you, when you see the Satanists and the people that have gone into different kinds of covenant with the enemy, what they have given out is their soul. Because that's the only valuable thing that they have. That's the only thing that you can trade with Satan. There is nothing else you can give him. That's why I don't understand why Christians today... Try to make their fellow Christians believe that what you can give to God is money. God doesn't need your money. If Satan doesn't need your money, why would God need your money? The only valuable thing you have as a human to give is your soul. So the question is, who do you want to give your soul to? To God or to the enemy? That is the question for us today. You know? And so, the testament of every believer who turns to the Lord with all of their heart includes sudden onslaught of strange and intense troubles and trials. And most often, when we go through these troubles and trials, we think that God is the one that has, that has sent this thing to us. No. Once you fix, you fix your gaze, on Jesus and make up your mind that this is the path that I want to go and nothing is going to stop me you begin to face all these things from the enemy yes God will allow it God allowing it is so you can get to that place where he wants you to be God allowing it is so you can know him for who he truly is so he can reveal himself to you in different dimensions. But the attack comes from Satan. And the attack is so you will fall off. You know? So if you have crossed the line of obedience, then you're already making waves in the unseen world, in the spiritual realm. And that's what we don't understand as Christians. You can be praying in your house right here. Like for me, instance, I can be praying in my house here in South Carolina. And then my small little prayer that I'm praying is causing war somewhere in another part of the world. That's what we don't understand as Christians. That you can be in one place, in one time zone, in another, in another uh, nation, praying the little prayer that you can pray. But you're already causing havoc. In the spiritual realm. These are the things we need to understand. As Christians. You know. And so. Like we read in Luke 22 verse 28 to 34. Jesus introduced the subject. Of shifting. To Peter. Simon Peter. Where he said to him. Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as with. This is Jesus telling his disciple. <laughs> this person is somebody that ate and drank with Jesus, that knows Jesus, that has seen the miraculous works that Jesus has done. 
that knows that Jesus is the son of God. <laughs> but when the enemy came, he denied Jesus not once, not twice, three times. <laughs> so if anybody tells you that as a Christian, oh, once you're born again, you don't get this, you don't get that, this doesn't happen, that doesn't happen, they are lying to you. The enemy will come with all of his strength and his might to discourage you, to turn you away from the path that you have chosen. Because he knows that this path that you have chosen is the right path. You know, he does that. So if, if the enemy can do this to people that have had one and one encounter with Jesus, that has ate and drank with Jesus, who are you and who am I? You know. And so, 31 says that Satan has desire to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. We all know what it means to be sifted like wheat. It means to be shaken. To be separated. It's like when you put wheat or grains in a seed and you're shaking it. To take out the dust and the dirt and to take out the dirt and the dust or whatever it is that you want to take out. As you're shaking it, you're separating the shaft from the seed. And that's what Satan does when you choose to serve God. He shakes you vigorously to see if you're going to fall off like the deaths. <laughs> we all know what it means, you know, to be shaken and separated. And most often, that's what Satan does to the people of God. Through the agitation of sudden trials. Oh my God. See, I'm speaking to you not as somebody that just got a word from the Lord. I'm speaking to you as somebody that has been shaken <laughs> every way possible. And so many a times, I get to that place where I give up. I say, God, no, this is too much. I can't do this. I'm telling you, I can't, I can't count the number of times that I've gotten to that place where I say, God, I can't do this. This is too much. Even when I wasn't being faithful, I never encountered trials like this. It's like everywhere is shut down. You can't see help from anywhere. So many times. I cannot count the times I have come to that place of giving up. But like I told us, if you're genuinely born again, and if you're truly serving God, even though you get to that place so many times, the Spirit of God will help you find your way back to the place where you belong. So I'm not telling you as one that just wants to come out here and speak. I'm telling you, as when mine happened, it was like they pulled the rug off, off under my feet. Like suddenly, everything went south. In a split second, I didn't see it coming. It wasn't like something that happened gradually and built. No, it happened suddenly. My world turned upside down. I didn't know. I couldn't understand it. I was, I was lost. I didn't know what was happening to me. <laughs> Suddenly, I cry many days and many nights. I ask God so many questions. But for some, some way, God has kept me. Till today where I am talking to you. I'm not talking to you as a perfect person. There are times when I say, God, I'm done with you. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it's better for me to live the life that I was living. At least I never had so much troubles. So many a times. But here I am. 
There are times I don't want to come on here to say whatever it is that God wants me to say because I keep saying, what's the essence, God? Because I don't even believe what I'm saying anymore. Yes, I've been there. Where the words that I speak, I didn't believe them anymore. But God is faithful. <laughs> See, what is in the hands of God cannot be plucked off. You can only be plucked off if you choose to be plucked off. Because God will do his part. Till the end, God will do his part. But most often, we as Christians, we don't want to do our part. Once the enemy unleashes his, his venom on us, we just go and remain where the enemy wants us to remain. That's what they say. If you fall seven times, you will rise again. Righteous man. You know. So when the enemy has done that to you, Satan believes that, you know, we are nothing but death. And that's why he puts us through trials and tribulations that shakes us. So we will fall through to the ground. We go through tests and trials and then sifting. Sifting is the one that is really major. <laughs> All out of Satan's onslaught, when he shifts you, that is when you know that you have entered. <laughs> You have entered. That's when you know. And, he, and the Holy Spirit made me to understand that it usually happens in a short period of time. In a short space of time. That's when you're shaking vigorously. You're shaking left, right, center. You're shaking in such a way that you don't even know where to hold or what to. You don't, you don't know anything. You are at a loss. And that was what Satan did to Job. Job had all this wealth. And overnight, he had nothing. He has lost everything. Do you know what that means? As a human. <laughs> Do you know what it does to you psychologically? Do you know what it does to you as a person? That's what Satan does. It happens like this. And then you are the lost. Like, how did it happen? Where did it come from? God, what is this? Then you start to ask and question. And in that process, some of us actually fall off. Why some of us hold on in obedience, believing that God is going to come true? It's hard. Nobody's saying it's easy. It's hard. To hold on even when you're seeing everything going south way, south ways. But if you're truly serving God, no matter how many times you say, God, I don't want to serve you anymore. God, I cannot do this anymore. God this and God that. You will always find your way back to that place of obedience to God. And that is what we're lacking as Christians. And a lot of us have crossed the line into disobedience. And we want to stick in disobedience to God. And some of us crossing the line into obedience. Most Christians cross the line into disobedience. Then they cross the line into obedience and what God is looking for from his people is a people that will live in obedience there are consequences to our actions see how God loves or loved the children of Israel they were his people he brought them out of the land of Egypt and showed them all these signs and wonders yet some of them Cross the line into disobedience. And what did God do? They died. They died in the wilderness. Moses, the man that has seen God, 
Moses, the man that spoke to God one on one. Moses, when he crossed the line of disobedience, he was told that even though he has brought his people from Egypt, even though he has seen God, <laughs> even though he has spoken with God one on one, he would not go into the promised land. Moses died not crossing into the promised land. So we as Christians, especially those of us that have said that we have dedicated our lives to God, we have to be extremely careful not to cross the line of disobedience. Because truth be told, as loving as this God is, <laughs> as loving as our father is when you cross that line with him you will pay for your you will pay for your actions and we need to let the children of god know that it is because we have preached grace and grace and grace and grace and grace that is why as christians we do all these things even though we know that it's against God, we don't care. We just have this mindset that, oh, once I ask for forgiveness, he will forgive me. We we'll begin to take advantage of the love of God. But today I'm yet to let us understand that if you cross that line into disobedience, there is repercussion. If you cross the line into obedience, there is victory. That is when you get the victory. But you know, they just teach us all these things that they teach us and quote the Bible without letting us understand. These things that the Bible has said, that God has said, that is supposed to happen to us as Christians. See, if you're living in disobedience, you are not, you're not a partaker of it though. Anybody that tells you otherwise is lying to you. If you're living in disobedience, if you're living in sin, if you're knowingly disobeying this God that you say you love. See, if you love somebody, you will do everything in your power to please this person. We do all sorts of things to please men, to please our spouses, to please our parents, to please our siblings, to please our friends. But we cannot try the bare minimum to please God. Nobody is saying that Satan will not come. But if you love God enough, that even though he has shaken you left, right, center, even though he has done the worst things to you, the love that you have for this God will still make you find your way back. So if you know that you have crossed that line into disobedience, cry out unto the Lord today and say, God, have mercy upon me. I love you too much to live in disobedience. I love you too much to die in disobedience and find your way back. God is not blaming you, you know, for not able to stand when you were shaking. But the problem is that after you've been shaking like that and you've fallen, why remain down there? If you love him enough, the love that you have for him will make you stand up and dust yourself and say, yes, I have fallen, but I will still try. That is why you need to press. You need to push. See, I'm telling you, I have fallen so many times. I have given up so many times. But some way, one way or the other, Sometimes it takes me like a week to find my way back. Sometimes it takes me two weeks to find my way back. But the one thing that I know is that for some reason, somehow, the Spirit of God has always helped me to find my way back. Even when I don't feel like it. There are times I just want to dwell in that place where I have fallen. Because it feels better just being there. 
where you can just say, God, I don't want to pray. God, I don't want to do this. God, I don't want to do that. But if you're truly a child of God, that have made the decision to serve God. That even though you dwell there for a period of time, you know that that is not the place for you. Because the Spirit of God cannot be in that kind of place. <laughs> you cannot dwell in that kind of place for too long. You can't. You know? So today I'm just here to encourage us. That even though we've gone through trials and temptation, tests and saving and all the stuff that the enemy has done for us, has done to us. We should use those days to become the most, you know, we should come to that place where we're remorseful. And say, I know I've hurt you, God. I know I've done this, God. But have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. And find your way back. Nobody is judging you. Even the best of the best. They find themselves crossing the line time to time. But what they don't tell you is that they actually cross the line. Some have even crossed the line and have remained there. So don't judge yourself. Don't condemn yourself that you have crossed the line. It is your responsibility to stand up and dust yourself and say, well, you got me this time. But I know who my God is. I know whom I want to serve. You know? You know? Our faith in God. <clears throat> has to be so strong. Even though sometimes. It is shaking like seriously. You still know that God is good. You still know that God. What he has said he will do. He will do. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that he should repent. Nothing is given out or handed out easily. We need to turn away from that mentality where we think that we can bribe God with all these things that we do. If you like, worship God from morning till night. If you're not living in disobedience, if you're not living in obedience, rather, if you're not holy, it's not going above your roof. We need to understand that as Christians, obedience and submission to God is our priority. Because it is when you live in obedience and submission to God that you begin to see this God for who he truly is. You cannot be in disobedience and say you're serving God. Uh-uh. You cannot be living in sin and say you're serving God. My brother, my sister, you're only deceiving yourself. Because like I tell us every time, you cannot deceive God. Neither can you deceive the enemy. The enemy knows who is for him. Just as God knows who is genuinely serving him. So you're just deceiving yourself. And the people around you that you want to show that you're serving God. It's a personal race. A personal race. You have to work out your own salvation. I cannot do it for you. Because I have to work out my own salvation. Your parents cannot do it for you. Because they also have to work out their own salvation. Your pastor cannot do it for you. He or, or she also has to work out their own salvation. It's a personal race. That's why the Bible means us to understand that we have to choose today 
womb will say. And when you make that choice, it doesn't just end there choosing womb you're going to say. But because whoever you, you choose to serve, you have to be in obedience and submission. It's so easy for us to submit to man's authority. Because we want to, we want to get accolades from man. But God, the one that nobody sees, your level of obedience and submission, we only are submissive and obedient to him when we're out there trying to impress people. But in though, we've crossed the line into disobedience. And God is saying, my child, dust yourself up, stand up, and make your way back. I love you too much to see you dwell in filth. And I tell us this every time that I come. If living in sin was okay by God, God wouldn't have sent his son to die for our sins. To cleanse us and reconcile us back to him. God would have left us to continue in sin. Or to continue to offer sacrifices for our sins. But those sacrifices that were offered for the sins of the people. Wasn't enough to actually clear them of their sins. And that's why God has to send his son Jesus. His own blood. The creator, the originator of all this. He knows that his blood is the only blood that can bridge the gap. And that blood is expensive. <laughs> that blood is expensive. But we have made a mockery of that blood. We have made a joke of that blood. All in the name of Christianity. If you know how expensive that blood is. You will not, you will not put yourself in the same place. The blood washed you out of. Mm -mm. You will not do it. So today, my brothers and my sisters, is a good day for us to ask ourselves, have we crossed the line by disobedience or by obedience? You are the only one that knows where you are, on what side of the line you are. Are you on the line, on the, other, on the side that says obedience or you're on the side that says disobedience? Which of the lines have you crossed? As a Christian, as a born again, as one who truly serves God, you should cross the line into obedience and make ways in the realm of the spirits, causing havoc in the kingdom of darkness and not cross the line into disobedience. Where the kingdom of darkness is excited and are feeding you with the things that you need to continue to remain in disobedience. Nobody can make that choice for you. You have got to make the choice yourself. And today is a good day to ask yourself. God, I know I have crossed the line into disobedience. Have mercy upon me. Holy Spirit, help me to find my way back. The reason why I'm talking about the line of disobedience is because that's where a lot of us Christians are. There are a few Christians that have crossed into the line of obedience. You cannot be afraid of the warfare because you don't have the power to fight it. You don't have the power to fight it. The Spirit of God is there to fight your power. That's why he said that even though the enemy comes, they said the enemy came as a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord raised a standard against them. The enemy came as a flood. That's what we're talking about. You know what a flood is. 
It is not your strength that will, will, that will, that will drive the enemy away. It is the spirit of the Lord. But well, most often we'll try to do it in our strength and it overwhelms us and then we'll just fall and just say, whatever, God, I'm done. And we'll remain there. Obedience is key. Okay, people. So thank you all for, you know, joining us today. And I hope that I was able to give this word you know, the way that God wanted me to give it. And I pray that, you know, um, the Holy Spirit will convince the hearts of his people to take a look at themselves and see if they have crossed the line of obedience or disobedience. And if they have crossed the line of disobedience, you know, to find their way back to God. And if they have crossed the line into obedience, to continue to live in obedience because that is what pleases God. He said, if you love me, you will obey my commandment. If you love me. So if this, it's that God is saying to you that if you genuinely love him, you will obey his commandment. There is no two ways about it. So if you don't obey his commandment, it only shows that you don't love God. Nobody is judging you. If you don't obey his commandment, it only shows that you don't love him. You cannot say you love him with one breath and with the next breath you're disobeying his commandments. It doesn't work that way. You know, we all have fallen short. Nobody is perfect. But the love that we have for the almighty God is what has kept us going. That even though we're ridiculed, persecuted, and shamed. Because those are the things that the enemy uses to mess you up so badly. Even though all these things have happened to us. We're still pressing. Even though giving up is the like we feel is the best option. It looks so inviting and so good. We we'll keep, we we'll just keep pressing. People don't want to hear this today, because this is not what you know tickles their ears. What they want to hear is sow seed and pay tithe and pay offering. These are the kind of things they want to hear. God is going to do this. God is going to give you a car. God is going to give you a husband. God is going to give you a job that pays you $500,000. God is going to do this. God is going to do that. You know, people just want to hear all these things that God is going to do. They don't want to hear what you have got to do for God. They don't want to hear that for God to do these things for you. You need to live in obedience. You need to live in total submission to him, to his will. They don't want to hear that one. They just want to hear the part that tickles their ears. But I don't even blame the children of God. It is because of the way that those that have, that have known God or that say that they are servants of God has preached the gospel, has preached God to them. And that is why I encourage us to have our own own intimate relationship with God. Get to know God for yourself. So you will not be deceived into hell. So you will not be deceived into your grave. If you get to know God for yourself, you will definitely know what is right and what is wrong. Because on that day, you're not going to tell God, that God, is this man that told me that if I do this and I do that, that is this. Is this woman that's it? Nobody's going to hear that. Nobody's going to hear that. Because you, you owe yourself that duty to get to know this God for yourself. You owe yourself that responsibility. It is your responsibility. It is your duty to know God for who he really is. To know God for yourself. Stop knowing God based on what somebody is telling you. Get to know God for yourself. It is your responsibility. So you will not say, this person told me something contrary. That is why I did not serve God. That is why I wasn't obedient to God. That is why I wasn't submissive to God. That one is excuse. You owe yourself that duty to create this 
intimate relationship with God and know him for yourself. Let him reveal who he truly is to you so you will not be deceived. The enemy is very crafty. He comes into, into everything in a way that you will not even know unless you have the spirit of God in you. That is when you can discern and see the enemy where he is. But most often we're blinded so we cannot see. And so because we cannot see, we get carried away with all these teachings that they teach today. The Holy Spirit, Jesus prayed for the Holy Spirit to come so that the Holy Spirit can teach us, so that the Holy Spirit can guide us, so that the Holy Spirit can lead us. Jesus prayed that prayer. Why? Because he knows the importance of having the spirit of God. Because he knows that without the spirit of God, we will all miss it. What was the essence of that prayer? What was the essence of having the spirit of God? If we're not even going to utilize this precious gift that was given to us. You know? So people of God, that's what I have for us today. Set your hearts and see which line you have crossed. Which line have you crossed? Father, we thank you for your people. We we'll give you glory, we we'll give you honor, we we'll give you praise for who you are, oh God, for what you have done for your people. We thank you, Father, for this day, for the conviction of the hearts of your people, for the change that is going to take place in the life of your people, for those that will dust themselves up and say, Nevertheless, Holy Spirit, strengthen those that need to be strengthened. Lead those that need to be led. And guide those that need to be guided. Teach us and bring everything to our remembrance. Help us because you are our helper. And comfort those that need to be comforted. Here I see I'm a soon here I'm a stay here Kasili. Ma here so I'm a sa here le here Kasuli here I'm a so here Kasili here. Oh here I'm a say here Kasili here I'm a so here ma ma here la here se Kasu ma here ma so here Kasili here. I'm a so here Kasili here I'm a so here I'm a so. Father, let your mercy find us. Have mercy upon us, O God. Help us. Forgive us. Show us the way. Reveal yourself to your people. Have your way, sweet Father. Have your way in our lives. Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Yeshua's most beautiful name we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. Oh, Father, I bless you. Lord, I worship you. Thank you, Father. Amen.
ちゅうか。In Jesus' name. Amen. So, people, you will get there. It's a process, it's a gradual process. You will get there. Don't ever give up completely. You will get there. Even when you dust yourself up and begin to push again, don't just give up. Don't just say, oh, I don't pray as much as I used to pray. Oh, I don't fast as much as I used to. Don't, don't, don't put all that on yourself. It's a process. You will get there. Provided you have the Spirit of God with you, you will get there. You will find your way back. That is one thing that I know for sure. Because I found my way back time and time again. You will get there. Okay, people. Thank you for joining us. We give God glory for your lives and what God is going to do in your lives. Continue to hold on. Continue to push. Continue to press. I love you, but God loves you so much more. None can love you like he does. No one, not one, can love you like he does. Okay? So enjoy the rest of your day and have a fruitful week. The remainder of the week should, will be fruitful and you will see the goodness of God. In the land of the living. Alright people. I love you. But God loves you so much more. See you some other time. Oh I'll see you on Sunday at 6pm. Hopefully. Um, Coming to that. You know we've, we've not been on on Sunday at 6pm. For like three weeks now. And I'm you know. I don't want to do things based on. How I want to do things. I just let God do things. The way that he wants to do it. And so, hopefully, we're gonna be on by on. We're gonna be on on Sunday at six. But if we're not, we're still gonna be here every Wednesday at three p.m. That's for sure. But when it comes to Sunday, um, Sunday's program, whichever way God wants it to go, that's how it's gonna go. I'm not. I'm not gonna push it or. You know, want to make it go the way that I want to go, okay? So that's the reason why you've not seen us online um, for a couple of Sundays now. But I know that God will bring the people that he wants to use to bring in himself glory. God is going to bring the people that will tell you their story. That will help change your perspective about whatever it is that you're going through. God is the one that will bring the people. I cannot bring them, you know. So when God brings somebody, we're going to be on for sure. But until then, make it a date with us every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Okay? Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you all.